Hello, everyone. It's a beautiful Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Veronica Danik Boy. With me, as usual, are my beautiful co hosts. Hello, ladies. Do All looking bright and beautiful. You too. <laughs> I love the accessory. Mm -hmm. Thank show you. them, show them, show them. Flash it. <laughs> <laughs> no, not now. Well, also, let's quickly uh, welcome our wonderful audience in the studio as well. Yay. Welcome to the show. <laughs> well, ladies. How was uh, Tuesday? Talk about you were not here yesterday, so no, I we wasn't. had fun on the show yesterday. With I'm, I'm <laughs> happy you guys did. Um, I'm grateful for new challenges. Um, I think that when when you pray for a blessing, then the, then new challenges will come, and then you will not be praying to solve those ones. Yeah. Um, one of my staff is expecting, and we don't oh. have a structure for maternity leave and all of that. Oh. And I know that it's a blessing. Of so course. I should be grateful. Mm -hmm. um, well, we also expanded and there were happy challenges of recruiting. So when I say I'm having challenges, people will be like, you, it's, these are good challenges, right? Yeah, you have a business, you make that, them, yeah. business is growing. Business so, growth, so, yeah. Yeah, so that's why I said I am grateful Problems. for new challenges. <laughs> and I'm praying for grace to surmount this one and expect the bigger ones that I know will come. Because everybody I speak with that runs a business in Nigeria will tell you the challenges of recruitment and keeping good staff is a major one. Yeah, mm. of course. Mariam. Um, you call that name. Yeah, you like, like it, right? Yeah, yeah I, I like know. the way she said it. <coughs> Thank you. That's I know. how you know that she's from the middle belt, sort of, <laughs> so she's sort of aware, <laughs> you know. Association. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes um, yesterday was um, the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. Yes. Yes, and I don't know. I had. It's. I have um, like family, like in law who in laws who are in the military or who have been in the military mm -hmm. and I also always find it and then I have friends who are married to military men. So I always find that period, you know, like time Super. to just reflect. Yes. And especially now that they am for um, you know, what um, our military what they're going through and especially, you know, a few um, weeks ago the pilots with yes. the Air Force that lost their lives. So I just feel that maybe today we should um, reflect on that. They are out there, they are people's husbands, they are people's children. I have a um, classmate who her brother died in one of the Boko Haram insurgencies. So I just feel that we should take time out and just reflect on the sacrifices that these people are making. Indeed. When, they, when they go, it's not, just a police, uh, it's not just a soldier that has gone. It's someone's father, it's someone's son, it's someone's brother. Beyond that I tend and to just say like ceremony, but I'm happy you brought this up because mm -hmm. for me, I just, when I see those things happening, I feel like it's just the lit rain, um, the no, rich it's, lane. It's honoring it's them just actually, a ceremony, yeah. but it's, it should be it's, more than it's, that. It's actually more than that. It's mm -hmm. honoring them. Some state governments like the Bielsa, Actually, the wives, some they were given so appointment. Give two yeah. of yes. them were given appointment. So, of course, more should be done. But then that day is meant thing, to yeah. reflect, mm. celebrate them, both falling and those and that are still alive. Yeah, all the <laughs> <laughs> so we are all reflecting this morning, um, and I reflected last week because <laughs> I had a lot to of ten sugar. years ago. No, I'm not doing that challenge. Oh, I did <laughs> Trust it. me. I have a picture so I can do for you. I reflected last week. And don't try it. I want funny, I want. Don't try it. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. I know where she's going. So I had a lot of a sugar. I had these carbonated drinks during the holidays. So I told myself that this 2019, I'm going to, you know, drink healthy, do more water. And um, I found this thing on the internet, how to do a detox. Yeah. Detox juice and um, yeah. vegetable vegetables so i blended the cabbage you have the to go carrot. to the internet you have come to me i, oh, have told you what to do. I forgot i'm sorry <laughs> the carrot the cabbage green pepper mm -hmm. i added i like sweets so i added raisins and the cashew and nuts and it? the drink was like how i now feel? see what you enjoy when you do all those smoothies yeah. the drink was <laughs> amazing every evening now go and buy i added ugu leaf too mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's nice. as a proper Igbo girl hey. <laughs> 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 where you don't have spinach you can use ugu leaves yeah. actually yeah, yeah. yeah. Was so really it passed. Nice. Veronica, yeah, how do you feel being able to do makeup, wear everything? No you know, it feels rules. good, right? Yeah. So yeah. I like it. It feels good. We have lashes. I know that Regina is listening to me. She was, she was like, you, you didn't like lashes before. Now you're that. And I'm you like, the class. I love lashes. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know, there's room for growth, you know. Yeah. Especially, you know, most people, when they see Veronica, she's corporately yeah. dressed on very the other yeah. show. Yeah. So to see your fun side, you know, <laughs> your colorful side, nice. Well, let's, when we return, 
from the front page reviews, the, rather the front page reviews start. Do stay with us. I've been talking too much, so. <laughs> 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 Well, thank you for staying with us. Let's start with the front page reviews now. The punch is right in front of me and the major headlines here says, acting IG Adamu reverses Idris last minute postings, says, <coughs> I'll be fair to all political parties for the IGs may go, bring professionalism to policing, governors tell Adamu, you find that story on page three of the Punch newspapers. And then uh, major pictures here shows uh, many killed as Al-Shabaab terrorist attack Kenyan Hotel, page nine. And that's a very sad one for uh, Kenya. Then we have uh, FG Borough, 6.16 trillion Naira from uh, 8.499 trillion Naira pension fund. APC Disciplinary Committee summons Okorocha six orders. INEC releasing unclaimed PVCs to APC governors at Tikwa ledges. Now, electricity consumers lodged their 390,809 uh, complaints in nine months. Wow. Saraki snobs XIG as Buhari orders hail foreign heroes. Uh, INEC accuses politicians of making payments to voters. US visa reps panel chair punched me over punches report says activists minimum wage neck gets uh, fg's proposal thirsty who has what story so i have the um, picture story um in kenya um there was a terrorist attack at a hotel yeah. and even though at the time of this report they can the numbers of victims is not um you know, certain yet, but mm, one of the well. reporters from Jean's France or something, you know, from a Parisian um, reporter says that at the time he was taking the pictures about five people he had seen just slumped over the table. So they go into this hotel in Nairobi, shooting, passed through the guards, they drove in with their cars, shooting mm. at the guards. And then, I mean, this is the second time I'm hearing that this has happened in Kenya. Mm. I the remember it was... Mm. It's coming it, as well on the heels yes, of was, the trial I, I for those who carried out killings at the mall. We know that yeah. mall incident. Yeah, that's the yes. one I was going to talk yes. about. And it was also around like a holiday period when that happened. This is really sad for, you know, for us. And we're joining our hearts with Kenyans hearts and saying, yeah, hearts go out to those of them. It, we just hope, really although sad. the Al-Shabaab agreed that took responsibility, but they did not give facts on what exactly happened, right. but they just said that they were the ones were that carried out this at um, attack on the So um, the INEX story, the resident electoral commissioner in Akwaibom State, Mr. Mike Igini, said on Tuesday at a lecture that the problem we have in the country now is that uh, the political elites are sabotaging what the INEC is doing. INEC is ensuring that we have a free and fair election, but then those political elites that, in fact, they have a report that politicians are already collecting account numbers of voters and paying them mm -hmm. to vote. You know, they cancel this votes buying. So I'm sure the pay, paying into the account is more like a safer thing for them to do compared to coming on that day I, to I just dish feel, out it, it money. It very, very so weird we need because there, 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 you can't just throw out one information or speculation, we, we should at least have facts. It's a mm. body. They yeah, have a report. Course. They have yes. a report. To back up. Yes. Yes. I never have a report. Yes. And then we yes. can now start prosecuting people that you have of course. reports on. There has to be you know, some that. sort of uh, evidence. Because in most states, the, the APC party in Imo state have called six persons that were involved in anti-party activities based on last week's event where um, the governor of Imo state was seen to, uh, they said, Act, um, say things that were bringing disrepute to the state mm -hmm. party and causing division within the party. And so these people, um, the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, a senator representing a specific area within the Imo, mm. Imo state, have been called to face a panel to mm. answer why are they doing this, being members of the party, carrying activities that do yeah. not support Anti -party the party. Yeah. Activities. So we hope that INEC so. publishes their names. Yes, yeah. and we have a process. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the nation now. Major headline, we have uh, CJN Onogen, EFCC, to go after rumor peddlers. <laughs> Fanny Kayode accused of spreading fake news. Whoa. Mm. APC chieftain blasts South South governors. Well, governors <laughs> stalk piling arms. Wow. That's uh, ahead of the elections, uh, as it is stated here. Well, British Parliament rejects May's deal. APC campaigns in Kwara Kogi today. Adamu steps in as acting IG. 
Buhari Governor's Tinubu greet Akonde at 80. Well, drama as Edgar Egberto will resume as legal CP. Jonathan's wife proves source of $8.4 million, $7.4 wow, billion naira with that. videos. Yes, I have the story. The Eagle Circuit opponents, April, businessman gets eight years. So who is... Yes, the... Um, major headline. No, uh, patient's Jonathan's wife. Okay. Yes, so um, the, he, her lawyer... You know, they, they, she's had this amount of money, 8.4 million and 7.4 billion found in her peers <laughs> that they wanted to forfeit to the um, yes, yes. Uh, federal government. But the lawyer um, brought out proof that, uh, in fact, presented five videos showing that that monies were meant for businesses. So they showed videos of uh, um, furniture businesses, grocery businesses, and all of those videos. And the lawyer also mentioned that she wasn't indicted on anything. She wasn't um, um, in invited to come and defend herself. And so that money should not be forfeited to the federal government. Mm. The case is still in court. Uh, it resumes today. Who has a major headline? You please. So yesterday, <laughs> the story went viral, you know. Um, Femi Fane Kayode, who seemed to be very active on Twitter, tweeted that, why have the EFCC so surrounded the home of the CJN Onoge? And why are they seeking to arrest him? These people want Nigeria to burn. Buhari, call off your dogs before it gets too late. This is democracy, not a Gestapo state. Hmm. Gestapo state. And in the name of God, let this madness stop. stop. That statement was found to be false. Mm -hmm. The EFCC did not surround, and it was retweeted. It went viral. Also, Yinka Odumaki released the video that was showing like a house being surrounded, and that also went viral. Whoa. It was also false. Fake. Wow. So now these two peddlers of fake news are going to be prosecuted. The EFCC said they're going to take it, take, take it up against them for libel because they're painting them like they went to mm. carry out an attack and they were not in any way involved. There was um, even no attack on the CJN. So social media, please, before we start retweeting and, you know, reposting and confirm. sharing. Very very sure, sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I really want this social to be prosecuted, media is though. quite difficult, although they are trying to get a hang of it, but it's quite difficult. But, mm. but then, this is a sensitive period, so yes. one has to be very careful. Yeah. And, and then someone like Femi Fanny Karade needs to be careful, because you can't verify stories on social media, so oh, yeah. some of your personality needs to be careful. Let's go to the Ivanga now. 2019 Buhari article split Niger Delta militants. RNDA one South South governors, 21st century youth threaten all companies. Massive quake in police hierarchy, drama as Edgar remains legal CP. Buhari calls for special FEC meeting, FG to present 30,000 Naira new minimum wage to NEC tomorrow. Rising state of poverty, abandonment of agriculture. And we have Southern Middle Belt leaders won against arrest of CJN. My home not raided by ESCC on our game. Well, anti-party, APC dangles suspension acts on Okorocha and Mosun. We are going to have crazy fun at Bangalore Awards tonight. Well, that's two things. <laughs> Oil price rises to $59.47 on supply cuts quickly. So major Most headline. Yeah. Um, the Niger Delta militants are, are now being, the, the headline says they've been split into two groups because we have a, a group that is supported by, um, that they believe is supported by Atiku. The group that first declared war on um, the pipelines that say they will blow up pipelines if um, CGN or, Dog or Noge is being prosecuted. Mm -hmm. They said that group, they're called the 21st century boys. Hmm. They are supported by Atiku. Another um. group called the um, reformed Niger Delta. We all remember the, ref the, RN, um, the reformed Niger Delta Avengers. These guys now are saying that let the rule of law stand concerning the CGN. If he has anything to answer for in the court, let them focus on that process and that they are totally in support <coughs> of tr um, true um, democracy taking place and they, are, they were pointing fingers that they are very sure that the other coalition, the 21st century boys, were supported by um, Atiku Abubaka. All right, so the uh, uh, mi new minimum wage quickly, the federal government is saying that um, after the FEC meeting that the deliberation has been suspended till after it's been presented to the National Executive Council. Mm -hmm. So it's more like I want to believe that they are stalling because remember that the NLC has given them till the 23rd of January to submit and still that time. to the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. So they are saying that the meeting after the, the NEC will finalize on the 22nd neck being the National Economic Council. Council. So this yes. contains both the state governors 
and the federal. The uh, federal sat on this meeting, but the, the decisions are being stalled by the state governor, so they quickly, wanted to involve quickly, the I know there's this story on New Telegraph that um, Moniam has to quickly take. <laughs> I'm sure it's a couple that sold their son for 20 Yes, I have now. that, but then... Quickly, quickly. Because it's so long, maybe we should do the um, DG of NAT force. Okay. The National Tax Force on Prohibition of Illegal Importation of Small Arms, Ammunition and Light Weapons. I think we should take it because he says it's come to his notice that some politicians and governors are stockpiling on arms and ammunition yes. that they are, they are planning to give to youths to use during this election, election period. And also buying um, police and army uniforms to also give to these youths. So mm -hmm. we should right. be careful. Although if they do know the names of these governors and politicians, they should be prosecuted. Yeah. That's based on the evidence you get. Mm -hmm. All right, quickly. Uh, that's what we can take. For the, from the papers today on the front page review. Next, we discuss the deployment of election observers by the European Commission to Nigeria. Stay with us. We will be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. Now, the European Commission on Friday announced the deployment of high-powered election observers mission to Nigeria to monitor the 2019 general elections. Some Nigerians, however, are against this act, saying that does the commission think that Nigerians are not capable of monitoring their own elections? After all, it is a Nigerian election. What are your thoughts on this? Join the conversation on 070-8066-8014. Tweet to us at TVC Connect with the hashtag YourViewTVC. Ladies, what do you think? Can't we monitor our own elections? But remember, yes, they have been coming to you know, observe elections, even across Africa. Yeah. But then 99. perhaps people feel we have outgrown that level. This is, we, we've not outgrown. We, we know we, we technically had... Um, we have independence technically, but as long as we still depend on loans, mm. as long as we don't have financial independence from the Western world, we will be beholden to them. Wow. Our budget for next year is still going to be largely funded by loan, most of them international. So they want to see stability in your country before giving you money or anything. So we can't tell them not to come. We have tre treaties with them that g puts us in that relationship. Mm -hmm. However, I, I realize that when we have um, foreign... Um, especially whites in our society, <laughs> we tend to respect, you know, and behave we ourselves. Behave ourselves right? So can we push, put the whites, in, these are <laughs> European Union um, people, uh, invest, uh, what do you call EOM. them? Observers. Observers Election at strategic, observers. you know, positions, positions that will guarantee. Of course, they are going to be. No, 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 they, no. They will be saying, everywhere. No, I want them to be at those, you know, fire lights, those zones that we're thinking might turn somehow. <laughs> because yeah, once areas. they, sensitive areas, because once they are there, we are sure that we'll have more security presence. They will be heightened, you know, observation, and we will prevent some things from happening negatively. But then I the electorate—that's just, uh, just there, there might be voter apathy at such areas. If so you see white oh, people, I do yeah. not have a problem with the um, election observers coming into the country. They've been doing this for, this is going to be our sixth election mm -hmm. as a country in democracy from 1999, 1999 to 2019 now. So they've been coming. But my question is, they are coming. Where has it led us? <laughs> we still have political instability in the country. Mm. We still do not trust our democracy. Let's not forget that how many of them will even come in the first place? They mm. do not understand the language. Mm. And so when they come, even that when fraud, language, you know, when uh, uh, we're doing elections in different states, you know, the Hausas, the Igbos, the different ethnic groups, robos. those people who don't understand English, but yet they it's vote. It's difficult to get an interpreter. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, listen, even when they come and they go to such places, Fraud can still be perpetrated under their, their nose, nose because they do not understand <laughs> the ways of the people. That's the truth. And how many are coming in the first place? Even if they say, okay, let us batch it into hundreds. If I say, hundreds, okay, how, exactly. how would they know? Yeah. <laughs> how many groups? Yeah. How many languages? <laughs> how, many, um, how many are they going to be? to monitor all the polls because mm. we have we are a heterogeneous country mm. we are large in number how many people are descending from the uh, european okay. union your question, to so handle yeah. all of this so, so where have you mind. led us mm. so my mine is um first we it's become like a, a international standard for mm. elections really because it's happened years it's, it's happened many years and then another thing is 
democracy is actually a borrowed um, um, mode, of governance. Yeah, mode of governance for us. Okay. So these are the, our uncles or our aunties. They mm -hmm. know how it is done. Mm -hmm. And so they come, and when they come, they just come to observe. They don't say anything, they, don't, they just observe to make sure it's credible, is it free and fair. So when they come and they say, so they are like a neutral body to just watch. So that when they speak and say, well, we thought it was free and free fair. fair. If, we know, if we remember, I think the, 20, yeah, mm -hmm. the 2015 election, yeah. they said it was basically free and yeah, fair. Okay. It gave that election credibility, mm. you know. But if they had said, oh, no, it wasn't, it, was, it had so many issues, Nigerians would be like, oh, it must have been, if the foreign observers were able to notice that, mm. you know. So it gives us credibility. <laughs> Then also, it's uh, because they observe, they've also helped us to fine tune our electoral process. Really? Yes, there used to be a time. Yeah. There used to be a time where they, you'd go for accreditation first, mm -hmm. and then you come back and then you do um, the proper well, election. by them. Yes. So from the observers, yeah, they notice that and they're like, oh, why don't you do that simultaneously instead of doing that first and then coming back? So those are the sort so of... That's, where, that's um, why we're having a continuous uh, voter... Well, that is where we started from. Mm. Continuity mm. now depends on us. And as Tokwe has mentioned, you cannot keep depending on people for funds. Mm. And they are, you know that they fund the election process. Mm. They give us financial um, support. backing, support. Mm. They give us technical support. They're training mm. your INEX staff mm. and everything. So you cannot expect, it's just like when somebody gives you money to build your house. Uh, As you are building it, you say, Uncle, please cement. come and see how we are going. Mm. But the moment you stop collecting money from the uncle, you are not obliged to call uncle to come and look at it. So that's how I see it. Hold on, perhaps uh, one of our audience uh, has a contrary view. Who, who has something to say? Quickly. <laughs> quickly, quickly. Um, I want to say something about the election. All right. You know, in 2015, when we voted this government, they promised us heaven and earth <laughs> that I would do this, do that, do that. But they entered and forgot their promises. So well, I want to ask. You believe? Yes. The yeah. The f yeah. But I want to ask, can't we handle these things ourselves? Can't, mm -hmm. do, do we have to involve outside uh, Do you people? think that we can handle it ourselves first? Are you convinced that well, we can we, handle we, it we ourselves? Well, we should if we know our onions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we <laughs> should. <laughs> we know our onions. <laughs> All right. Uh, hold on, please. We have, she's about on the line. She's, she's, she or he has been hanging on for some time now. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Go ahead with your contribution. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, my name is Chiloba. All right. Yeah, um, I want to talk on the topic. The thing is that we Nigerians, by this level, we should be able to organize everything happening in our country. Whether they call the EU, whether they call whoever they want to call, what will still happen will still happen. It's only the government officials that will still select who they still want to be there. All these things are just make them of life. It's high time we just sit up and take care of our country. Instead of doing so many things, I, I, I don't even understand this country. Really. We don't need all those things. <coughs> Let's just sit down and put our hands together and make this country a better place. Our leaders, what they are doing is not fair. They don't need to call the whole world to commit uh, to this. All right, she's really. about. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Don't be tired of your country. Yes, you <laughs> we have to make things work. We have to make things work. So, Veronica, I want to quickly say that um, I don't think what they are coming to do is anything. It's not a big deal, the, yeah? It's not a big deal. It's just more for diplomacy's sake. We mm -hmm. are in this... Um, we have, yeah, we have yes, that relationship. We have that relationship. Yeah. So and we want to invest and observe and see. These are the and things... I would rather if they use that money because um, doing my research, they spend over um, um, 100 million to carry out yeah. this in different countries, mm -hmm. yes, uh, the Europeans. So uh, I would rather they use that money to, you know, fund governments that need that funding. And also, I want to mention that we should look inwards and design that system of government that is suitable to us, made by us that will work for us. Because if we keep doing democracy, we're not very strong, we're still nascent in that democracy. At the end of the day, we still fall back to them because we feel they know better than us. We can't stand as a country. All right, quickly, we have Victory on the line calling from uh, Iyaba. Welcome to the show, Victory. Go ahead with yeah, your Veronica, contribution. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning to everyone in the studio. Mm. I don't think I just <laughs> take ourselves out of this sensational mediocrity, mm -hmm. honestly. Because if you look at the situation critically, you know pretty well that there are complete dependency on the outside the Western world, like Tom Brown actually said. Mm -hmm. If we look at there was this picture I watched yesterday, if in Nigeria, if you are not aware, if it's a passport, international passport, like men for the generality is going for as much as 70,000, then you will know they are not getting it right at all. 
and the president has already had it as well as the vice. But what now happened to you is subject you are governing. Seven times for the ten years that city passed us is disgusting and just as for this country. Thank you, God bless you. All right, thank you for your contribution. But you see, these things, we, we also need, you know, that relationship. We want investors. We are trying to attract investors. And right now, whatever you do at the elections, determine the kind of investors that you would attract and the credibility of yeah. that elections coming from, like, the European observer mm -hmm. yeah. would also make, you know, give them such sort of confidence mm -hmm. that, yeah. okay, we could Quick come. addition to that. You see, the, the Western world have developed a culture of preventive measures. Mm -hmm. So rather than me allowing your country to be unstable, and then the instability in your country brings me immigrants and I have to deal yeah. with them in my, on my so own I soil. Well. I would rather come and help you stabilize your country. I will spend all the money to keep <laughs> your sure. citizens in your yeah, country, country than now have to deal with them there. So I think we can borrow that. There are some issues that are brewing that if we stem now, we can prevent it from becoming a calamity. So mm -hmm. I think we should also start preventing issues from escalating like the way they are helping us to prevent issues yeah. from escalating into uh, their own side. And then there's something that um, one of our um, audience members said, like, why can't we do it on our own? First of all, it's not like we're not doing it already, but then we have extra eyes and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So the only thing now would be, do we do the same for them when they're yes, doing yes, their yes, elections? elections? Do we have international observers from Africa? and Nigeria <laughs> going there. We do have a few that go there, but we hear that they go mainly to learn the process, but, but not really to just observe. understand democracy, it's not our thing. So, so except is, um, the traditional system of government, we are going to go back to, then we can go and observe. <laughs> All right, let's quickly move on now. What do you understand by work ethics? We have an expert to teach us what it is about. Stay with us, we will be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Once again, thank you for staying with us. Now, a lot of Nigerian workers have been termed to have poor work attitude. And this has become a concern to most employers. For many people, work is the least rewarding part of their lives. So today, we will be commencing a series on etiquette. And the focus today will be work ethics or work etiquettes. Now joining us on the show is the chief facilitator, Eziga Finishing School, Clara Kolade. Thank you for coming to the show. <coughs> Welcome to the show. Well, thank well you. <laughs> join the conversation on 0708066014. Tweet to us at TVC Connect with the hashtag YourViewTVC. Now, Maybe you need to break it down because I'm sure some persons watching us may not really understand work etiquette, what ethics. So perhaps tell us what it is about. Let's start from there. Oh, good morning, ladies, and good morning, everyone. We are at home. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, generally, when you talk about etiquette, it simply means respect, being showing respect, being sensitive, and showing consideration mm. to people and to the environment. It's, that's just the definition of etiquette. For instance, uh, if I respect this institution, this building, and I come in here this morning, I do not see pieces of paper on the floor, I won't have to eat sweet and drop it, the wrapper on the floor. That shows that I'm sensitive to this environment to know that <coughs> cleanliness is key here. So once, and um, most of the time when I teach about etiquette, you first and foremost need to tell yourself, these are my, Ethics, this is what I should do before you expect something from somebody else. Because if you do not respect something or someone, you are not likely going to have that back. I say, for instance, when I get to a place, the first place I visit is the, the restroom. And I always advocate, leave the restroom better than the way you met it. Mm. Most people go there and they splash water on the floor and they don't care. They say, what is the cleaner doing mm. or the cleaners doing? We should respect ourselves. And because if you don't have personal ethics, mm. you are not likely going to have work ethic. Mm. That's how mm. it goes. For instance, one of my principal uh, ethics is loyalty, punctuality. I'm a stickler for time. If you ask me to come here at nine o'clock, half past seven, I'm here. 
<laughs> I'll factor it in that, okay, there'll be traffic in Lagos and all that. It's not proper for me to come here and tell people here and begin to whine to my audience or the audience is waiting for me. And they say, oh, our facilitator is coming. And then, I'll, for instance, if it's religious circle, then let's begin to sing songs while we're waiting for the <laughs> lead speakers. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't show respect. I'm sorry, you are simply rude. So, Ooh. from what you just said, I don't think Nigerians have any etiquette <laughs> then. I mean, we're late for weddings, we're late for church, we're late for work, we're, I mean, oh my God, so in I traffic, we're, we're you know? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be late for that. Oh, please, please, please. I don't want to, you're just driving me now, because if I want to begin, I won't finish please today. Begin, begin. Okay, let me just begin. For instance, we, we, my, uncle, my uncle's wife is 87. And because she's been running a school for 50 years, 55 years, we, she gets invited to so many functions, housewarming and all that. And I tag along and she says to me, Clara, are you free? Can you come with me? And, and we get to this place and they tell us two o'clock. And we're there for half Happiness past one, my happened. uncle's wife and I, and we're there till four o'clock. <laughs> and the Alagai Duro is busy doing all sorts of things. And we're kept there, 87 year old, waiting for a 28 year old yeah. boy. To come for his wedding. It's wrong. What do we call it? African, African time. time. There's no African time. time. Sadly, time it's a is culture. Money. Um, but bringing it back to the workspace, I, I related with um, a friend and he was, I felt, I, I, at first I felt he overreacted. If somebody came to his office, sat on his, um, with his table and stretched out his leg. Oh, no. And he was like, you don't do this. You don't do this. You don't do this. This is where I make money. This is my workspace. Mm -hmm. You respect my workspace. And I, I felt like, ah, kid, I'd make you. This reaction is too much. <laughs> First, he just he said, no. It's, it's, that, that you mustn't disrespect my workspace. I do creative work here. You respect my workspace. Mm. And so I, I realized that we don't, we don't have a set of guidelines about how to behave in a work environment. You don't know how to treat where we earn our living from. People mm. come, they lose their hair, mm. they come as in, you know, there's this sort of playful they attitude around, around what is important. Yes. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Uh, it's really, really sad. That shouldn't happen at all. You can't come to my house and tell me how you will behave and conduct your affairs. Mm -hmm. Starting from the office. You want to get into the office and someone sees Elsie's office, knock on the door, Wait for his response before you come into the office. And when you come there, make sure that you stand by the, the chair and wait for the hosts to signal that you should have your seat. It's not your chair. <laughs> Don't Tell draw them. it and sit. <laughs> <laughs> Not to talk of people putting your leg on the, on the, the table. table. Or you come to my house, you want to put your legs on my sofa. No, I'm sorry. I won't let you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. If we should come to realize that we should respect people. That is key for me. You need to show respect okay. to people. Once you don't show respect, you put yourself in somebody else's shoe, what you call empathy. If someone behaved like this to me, how would yeah, I like feel? You. you would never feel, you may forget what people say to you and how they say things to you, but you never forget how they treat you. Of course. Yes. It is very key. We need to come to that level where we respect people, even especially in the office. I I cannot imagine why you share office with people and you come and eat of other rice mm, that has locust beans in it. Mm. And the whole office is like that. I cannot, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> you are right, man. <laughs> you are so right. So it shows we, we don't really respect ourselves and respect others. So that same issue of respect, but another angle where mm. you get into an organization and then they expect that because you are a younger person in age, mm -hmm. not necessarily in status in the or organization, ranking. you should go and kneel down and to genuflect. Genuflect. genuflect to yeah. greet. Or use so the word anti. Anti <laughs> ma. ma mm. And see, that's more like mm. anti mommy in a workspace. <laughs> <laughs> in a workspace. So, um, how do you differentiate, you know, the outside environment and we from are here infiltrating to work? Yes. into the workspace? I understand. What happens is that every workplace has its own culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's for you to have a culture in place. Mm -hmm. You can say, for instance, in TVC, when you come here, just address people by the initials mm. SI. 
SK. Okay. Good morning, ma. Good morning, sir. Suffices. I don't see any reason why you should genuflect and dobale mm -hmm. because you want to greet a boss. Okay. Just say good morning, sir. Good, good afternoon, sir. And half of the time, well, some people do genuflect, but their body language is saying something else because, you know, <laughs> body language is very essential. <laughs> their facial expressions, their gestures, their posture is saying, well, you are disturbing me. You want me to just I do this like as, as service. Let me just do it and get on with my life. Mm -hmm. It does not mean you really actually respect the person. So know a culture. I know some organizations that we train in customer service. We've come up with a template. Mm. Good morning, is a good day in TV City today. How may I help you? Mm. Oh. Mm. My name is Clara. Mm. So you know, it's not someone putting a call through to you and then I say, is that PZ? <laughs> I said, no, it's T TVC. Mm -hmm. And you are beginning, oh, sorry, wrong number. And half of the time, the way we handle call the telephone here, it's mm -hmm. very wrong. Mm -hmm. I tell receptionists, when the telephone rings, that's your paycheck coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're the one that interferes with the members of the public. Don't think the job is demeaning. Mm. I'm just a receptionist here. Right, I'm just a cleaner you. here. You're as important as the next person. So have a culture of a workplace and abide. Show respect without necessarily having to crawl oh. on the floor. Mm. Okay, now one, one, one aspect that I would like for you to touch is the, uh, because the one word that has been reverberating is respect. Mm -hmm. Now, Another, another aspect in uh, work etiquette or work ethics is dress code. How do oh. you show respect? Mm. Mm. Your dressing. Mm. Your dressing. Mm. This is huge for me. In our finishing school, we have grooming. We have a course personal grooming. It's, it's not even only the dress where it starts from the preparation, care of the body, care of oral hygiene. They, you, the hairstyle we wear, people wear hairstyle for like six, seven, eight weeks and they sweat, they go into traffic and they come to your office and by the time they come here you are losing, perceiving some heavenly things. <laughs> <laughs> so it even comes with the care of the face, oral hygiene. It, some people think they know how to brush their teeth but they're not doing the right thing. Well, for instance, if you brush your teeth, you need to brush your tongue. If you do not brush your tongue, your mouth will you smell. smell. That gown. <laughs> and, and you have to consider other people in the environment. Take me the way I am. No, you are interacting with people. We can't take you with a the way mouth. you it's are. It's good to have garlic and come to work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you just finished a pub of garlic. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Because you see, when you, that statement you made, uh, mm -hmm. one of the things I learned, um, TVC was my first corporate working environment, mm -hmm. of even working, you know. And I realized that I always had the opinion that treat others the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. yes. But that, I think, and now I know, mm -hmm. is wrong. Mm -hmm. Because I might not mind you putting my, your leg on my table. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. Mm -hmm. I might not mind you putting your leg on my couch. Mm. But you might find that very irritating yeah. disrespectful. And, so, and disrespectful. Mm -hmm. So I cannot expect to treat you the way I want to be treated. I mm -hmm. must treat you the way you mm -hmm. want, want to be treated. To be treated. Yeah. If we're in an office environment, I can't do the way I want to do and expect everybody to accept me. Mm -hmm. I must do what will make everybody else comfortable, comfortable. Yeah. and enjoy down, the environment. Can you give us three key things that must be um, like, like pillars to help work, workers, um, colleagues work together best? That are ethics that we should, yes, that work together better. Things you must mm. know. You, things you must know. First and foremost, you need to know more about body language. Mm. Because it is the verbal communication that carries the highest percentage of communication. Mm. And that is a form of communication. The written one is nothing. The verbal communication, gestures, Facial expressions, mm. you can have 250,000 expressions, don't pay attention attention to that. but you have to. And that's why you get a rebuff. If you do not study the body language of your mm -hmm. boss and you just throw things at them, you get a rebuff, you get a no. And the next thing you begin to whine that's as sense. a worker, oh, they don't, she, she doesn't like me, she doesn't like my face, like love, 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 love. But that's not the only thing. Body language is very essential. Communication, right. that, communication is understanding both of you, the, the standard is what well, you understand. Let me be courteous. Yeah. Please, we need to take a break. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
right, we're still talking about work etiquette and we still have Clara in the studio. Thank you for being patient with us. I hope we are not uh, encroaching on anything, but then <laughs> you are talking of <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are telling us about three key things we should know earlier. Okay, I had mentioned body language, uh -huh. which yes. is essential. That body thing you language. say, that thing that screams without you saying a word, mm -hmm. that is body language, facial expressions, mm -hmm. gestures, posture. Mm -hmm. For instance, you're talking to somebody, eye contact, he's looking away, he's either he's uh, lying or he's not, he's not sure of what he's talking about yeah. or he's not interested. That's the interpretation of that. And um, I talked about communication, communication, which is key. We could talk about communication from now till tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's really loud. And I said that it has to be understanding 50% of the person that is talking and the person that is receiving. You know, in school, we are taught we are, um, arithmetic English, but nobody taught us how to listen and how to communicate. Mm. You have to learn it. And it's the main, is a hub on what the wheel of life run. Because mm. if I say sorry to you, that's communication. If I brush your leg and I say, sorry, what else do you want? Ah, that mm. is the communication, but it's strong. The tone <laughs> or voice is different. Yes. You understand? And the third one, quickly, is confidence. Mm. You have to have what I call mega dosage of confidence. Mm. You say something and you know, and you do your research. When I was called up yesterday evening, I had to go on the internet to look at TVC. I was surprised at the definition of TVC because I was thinking of something else. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now, you know what? What is all yeah. about? Yes. Yeah. So you have to have self-confidence, self-worth, self-esteem. Yeah. Mm. It's, most, it's very okay. key. Yes, most people would think when we talk about etiquette, we think it's a uh, you know, rigid set of rules that we have to follow and you have to be this particular way, sit a particular way, speak a particular way. But then... Practice I'm Cambridge, a, you know, Cam Cambridge Cross yeah. and Duchess Cross. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> it's, like, it's an evolving society, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of things that were not work um, you, um, appropriate um, like clothing. Dressing. Now it's different. Even the way offices are set up now, it seems more casual. Mm -hmm. And another thing that sort of moved into the offices is our phones. Yes. <laughs> so we're always on our and phones. Phone. And really sometimes for most of us, we don't know how to use it in such a way that we're not crossing lines and being disrespectful and yet being able to be, you know, um, use it as a work tool. So if you have any advice for us. Oh, I do. I, I have a course that we call uh, net etiquette, etiquette of, of social media, mm -hmm, okay. what you post there. We need to be careful what to put on social media. Things that we, we brandish there has come out, come back to hurt people mm -hmm. in a negative kind of way. Mm -hmm. For instance, you bring your affairs to social media mm -hmm. and, the, and it crumbles like a b b badly arranged cards. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> pe pe sorry, people are beginning to, to, to uh, make fun of the whole thing and you're upset that people are insensitive to your pain. Mm -hmm. You brought yourself there. So you should take yourself out there and whatever uh, fallout comes from your putting your affairs there, mm. you, you should own it. Mm. Uh, you, we have so many, you yeah. have so many public people that had put things on social media, and it came back 20 to meters, them. 20 years later, it, it came, came back to, to, to find them. There are several that we can see in the society. So be careful, even when you post it and you take it down, people can trace it back. Mm -hmm. So, and in the office, exactly, and in the office, it's even worse. When you go to some institutions, I go to some institutions and there's maybe a lady at the back of the console and I'm talking to her and she's busy like that. And I'm like, uh, I'm listening. Go on speaking. I'm listening to you. <laughs> and this is work environment. Mm. You, most of us, we don't even use the tools to enhance our work. Mm. We use it just only for social things. Mm. I think it is wrong. Even when we teach dining etiquette at formal settings, it is inappropriate for you to be looking at your phones where you're supposed to be chit-chatting with the next person to you. Mm. Mm. Right, you should keep your phones off. Let's quickly yeah. take... Uh, Please, can we quickly take a yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, so who has a question mm. for her? Yeah, I don't, uh, it's not really a question, but I just appreciate all she said so far. Mm. She has touched so many areas. But one thing I want to tell everybody about ethics is that you should first of all respect your person. Mm. When you respect yourself, you will not hurt others. If you love humanity, you will not fake up things. Mm -hmm. Be original. Mm -hmm. So I believe that 
is part of ethics. Yeah. And I know it will work for us if we stay original. Thank yeah. you. Right. Thank you. One more, one more. <clears throat> so, sorry, my question to her is that in a society like Nigeria, do you really feel that this work etiquette will work? Because the <laughs> wage is not very uh, encouraging for workers. Because I look at myself, like I worked in an Arab bed shop for two days, and I had to step aside. Because my salary was 20,000 naira. And the way they would talk to you, the way your bosses talk to you, the way customers <laughs> talk to you, I'll be killing it in sorts of words. <laughs> and you will feel like, ah, on top of this small money. So the society in Nigeria <laughs> is the wage uh, very encouraging. Like this living standard of workers will really encourage them to uh, this work etiquette. Observe work etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. you. You know the misconception we have in Nigeria, we feel if somebody is a boss, the GM or deputy general manager, he will not be uncouth. He will be refined. Mm. Most it's not a function wow. of mm. titles and designation. Mm. Oh. Is in your working on yourself and say, look, I'm going to be a better person. I want someone to meet me tonight and be glad that they met me when they're going to bed. Mm -hmm. I know what it means that there's a lot of brawn, a lot of brash mm -hmm. in this society, but you can be, you can be outstanding. Yeah. You can be outstanding. I remember I was at a place yesterday and there was this cone, they used to block the road and someone was trying to come into the complex and I removed the cone for him and he, he drove he was trying to drive and um, wouldn't let me even pass. Ah. That I removed the cone from him. I said, excuse me. You put the cone back. You come out and drive and put the cone back. But you could tell yourself that I will not do it. Okay. So don't assume that somebody is GM, that therefore he will be refined. Yeah. No. Okay. We need, all of us, we need to work on ourselves. And when you talk about ethics, do you have ethics? Are you loyal? Are, Are you honest? honest? Hmm. Strong. Are you Respected. time conscious? Mm -hmm. It's what you have as a personal mantra that you translate to workplace. Okay. Okay. So there's, for me, you know, he said something, he talked about for this small money, you know. <laughs> so I think we should understand that it's not about what you, uh, the payment that you get. It is about you. If you respect yourself, whether you have small money or big money, you know, it should not make a yeah. difference. But you also said something that, um, uh, society's brush. I find myself being on the receiving end of a lot of brushness. That's how I see it. <laughs> I find that not, you know, I'm trying to not be immodest, but I find that, you know, compared to most people, I respect people more than they respect me. I find that I tend to respect people's space more than mm -hmm. my space is respected. Mm. And when I don't, you know, and then I find that people see me as the, uh, as the weak one or the... Mm, the doormat. The, yeah, the doormat, because I would not, I would not step into, I would not encroach into your space, your boundary. I will give you that respect until you give it to me. You, you know, I'll give you that respect even if you don't give it to me. Mm. But because I let you disrespect my space, my boundary, I'm sort of seen as the one that is not the, you know, the strong one, or, yeah. you know? So this etiquette, is it a Nigerian thing? Or maybe I should just be yeah. as brush as everyone and make sure I hold my side. To chief, to chief, yeah. How does this boost the career of maybe anyone listening to us? Oh, great. If I just answer that before I come to her, that kind of etiquette is like flat tire, someone having a flat tire. You, can't, you won't go nowhere mm -hmm. until you fix it. Oh. Mm. You won't go Ouch. nowhere. You just think that is nothing. It's essential. For instance, if you come to my office, I will look at totality of you. Mm. It's not because of how expensive your dress is, mm. but the way you're able to put yourself, yourself together, mm. your poise, your gait. Mm. It's not you're walking and you're, I'm hearing the sound of your, of your legs from 10 kilometers. Okay. <laughs> if I want to have you as receptionist, I will not hire you. I'm sorry. Okay. Mm. So if you can please quickly wrap up what she yeah. asked, then they will wrap up because we're running okay. out of time. The, yeah. the, 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 will the society just do the best? Mm -hmm. don't, don't mind it. For instance, I drive and um, go help you. Give right of way to two cars. 20 cars wants to pass Immediately. Without, without, without caring how you feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No consideration of any kind. Right. But you have to be the one that will stand in the society. Okay. You don't know you are the book somebody else is reading. So no more.
and do better. All right. Thank you, thank Clara, you so for thank you. educating thank you for us. Me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies, I'm sure we had a great time. Yes, yes. we did. And I'm sure get, our time. audience rather also had a great time learning from Clara. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, ladies. Well, that's all we can take on today's show. Don't forget the repeat as at 11 p.m. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thank you, thank you.